Hey everyone, Turd Flingy Monkey, how you doing? The Manosphere is a network of mostly men, and mostly online, to discuss and attempt to solve issues facing men. In this video, I will explain the various groups within the Manosphere, how they interact, the relationship between them, and why there seems to be so much infighting. I realize that I'm only a month old YouTube channel and have no influence or authority on this subject. This is simply my observations and thoughts on this matter, and I leave it up to you the viewer to make of it what you will. I do identify with the MGTOW philosophy, so I will have a bias, and I'm being upfront about it. If that bothers you, click that little X in the upper right corner. The Manosphere is broken up into three general divisions. Anti-feminists, men's rights activists, or MRAs, and men going their own way, or MGTOW. I realize that men's rights activists are sometimes referred to as men's human rights activists, but I'm just going to call them men's rights activists in this video for simplicity. The colors were chosen mostly arbitrarily. I used red shades for MGTOW because the red pill is a common fixture in MGTOW discussion, but I'm not implying that MRAs are blue pill or anti-feminist or green pill. The other colors really don't mean anything. Anyway, let's start with anti-feminism. To be an anti-feminist, you merely have to be aware of the reality of feminism's double standards, double think, and anti-male hatred. Many anti-feminists just make fun of how dumb feminists and social justice warriors are and are content to leave it at that. See Internet Aristocrats' old videos about Tumblrisms for a great example of this mentality. I'll post an archive link in the description. Some wish to think beyond the current situation involving feminism and ask what caused this regrettable situation to metastasize to this point. It is at this point that we reach our first fork in the road, and those wishing to begin the process of solving the problem must decide where the root cause lies. The first path is that feminism as an institution is to blame. Women have been hoodwinked into supporting feminism out of ignorance to its true nature by social Marxists or simply by entitlement due to the self-esteem culture. If this is true, then the solution is political activism in order to counteract the current Marxist feminist narrative, and to alert men and women to how feminism is destroying men unfairly. Since women are adults with rational minds and aren't selfish or evil by nature, they will respond to the truth positively and reform the unfair laws and institutions that are hurting 50% of the population. The second path is that female nature is the problem. Feminism didn't come about because of a social Marxist conspiracy, but as a manifestation of women's biological nature to acquire resources and protection, only using the government instead of men. Political activism is useless because women don't care about facts and fairness. They only seek what benefits themselves. They no longer need men to voluntarily give them what they want in exchange for sex, because now they can use the government to take what they want from men at the point of a gun. If anti-feminists believe that feminist and Marxist institutions are the problem, they will join the men's rights movement and will either seek fair government or less government overall. If they believe that feminism is nothing less than female nature personified, they will bypass the men's rights movement as an exercise in futility and go straight to MGTOW. This is where Sandman fits in my opinion. He identifies as MGTOW, but his audience is mostly people new to the entire concept. He's almost like a MGTOW ambassador to anti-feminism and he serves as an important function in that he helps guide men who are new to the Manosphere to MGTOW, which is a big reason why MGTOW is growing while other groups such as the Men's Rights Movement are shrinking. Moving to the Men's Rights Movement, there are two divisions there as well, those who seek fair government and those that seek less government. At this second fork in the road, those who believe that institutional feminism and Marxism are the root cause of the problem must then address how best to solve it. Those seeking less government include conservatives and libertarians seeking to shrink the size and scope of government as a whole in order to solve the problem. Rather than play defense against feminism and beg the government to make the laws more fair, just get the government out of the picture entirely. Instead of reforming marriage contracts, just get rid of marriage contracts. Instead of reforming social programs so that they benefit men equally to women, just get rid of the programs altogether and let people keep the money they have. What's interesting about this group is they don't concern themselves primarily with feminism or men's rights directly, but consider the government itself to be the root problem, and believe that a smaller government would naturally solve many of the problems in society. The other group within the men's rights movement supports equal rights for both genders, but isn't necessarily focused on the government as a whole. 
An analogy would be the Occupy Wall Street movement. Many there believed that the government shouldn't have printed all that money and bailed out the banks, while others merely wanted the government to bail them out too in ways such as forgiving their student loans. They had no moral objection to what the government did, only that they didn't get their share. These members of the men's rights movement want the government to expand rights for men, thus giving the government more authority overall. This places them in direct opposition to the group that seeks less government, and the infighting is another one of the reasons why the MRM is collapsing. Recently, due to dwindling support, the men's rights movement has turned to traditionalism and women in order to bolster their ranks and influence. They realize that due to women being more than 50% of the voting population, any changes to the laws will need to get the approval of women. This has caused a schism in the men's rights movement and pushed some into the MGTOW camp, notably John the Other and Diana Davison. The real problem I have with men's rights and traditionalism is that it's all about what benefits women. Feminism tells women that patriarchy is oppressive and they should go out and get a job. And traditionalism tells women that they would be happier and better off staying at home while their husband earns all the money. Neither side cares about the man or what's best for him, except MGTOW, which brings me to... Men going their own way or MGTOW is the final segment of the Manosphere, and again consists of two groups, those fighting against traditionalism and those seeking male self-actualization. Anti-traditionalist MGTOW oppose marriage and gynocentrism. According to them, women are not inferior to men and don't need to be treated as such. Relationships should be equal. Women should be expected to work, pay half the bills, etc. in a relationship. Men and women should treat and be treated as equals, which flies in the face of both feminism and traditionalism, which focus on the delicate nature of the female snowflake and how she must be protected either by men in the case of traditionalism or from men by government in the case of feminism. The second group of MGTOW are those seeking self-actualization. They are the Übermensch, a German word meaning a superman. These MGTOW have run out of fucks to give about women and have refocused the energy and resources that other men use to chase women and replicate their genes into creative and fulfilling activities for their own benefit. There is a video from John the Other regarding the so-called Alpha MGTOW, where John derides men identifying as MGTOW who work out, have wealth, and get sex whenever they want as confused fools that define themselves through female approval, and thus are not men going their own way at all. This is a misunderstanding of self-actualizing MGTOW. A MGTOW Ubermensch will work out and gain wealth, but for his own sake. Yes, women will be attracted to him for these things, but that is merely a byproduct and not the purpose of his self-actualization. A MGTOW Ubermensch is confident, he seeks knowledge, and he requires resources for his own use, to make his life better, more ordered, and more satisfying. He does not live his life for female approval, and yet paradoxically attracts women naturally, and even more paradoxically doesn't give a shit. A self-actualizing MGTOW may even have a short to medium term girlfriend, but he will never marry her, and once she hits the wall or gets a little bitchy, she's gone. She's only part of his life for as long as she provides a net benefit, because his life belongs to him and him alone. Not all of these MGTOW find fulfillment in activities such as fitness and wealth. Other forms of self-actualization may be entirely asexual and contemplative. The variety of self-actualized MGTOW is as varied as the individual's, because each man must define what he wants to live his life for. In my opinion, the self-actualized MGTOW is what separates MGTOW from the rest of the manosphere. All the other groups are more or less focused on women and relationships. What's wrong with them? How can we fix them? Won't someone think about the children? To use some Matrix examples, because you can't talk about MGTOW without a reference to the Matrix. The anti-feminists are like Neo when he was known as Mr. Anderson. They're aware something is wrong, and are seeking information and answers. Their curiosity leads them either to the men's rights movement or MGTOW ambassadors like Sandman. If they join the men's rights movement, they join the team of rebels. They become like Trinity, Morpheus, Mouse, Dozer, etc. They join the fight against the agents of feminism and government corruption. The self-actualized MGTOW is the one. He is the master of his own reality. Whether that means living off the grid using the traditional MGTOW level system, living a life of asexual contemplation and creative expression, or otherwise bettering himself through physical fitness, the acquisition of knowledge, or financial accumulation. Well, that's my guide to the Manosphere. I hope you enjoyed your tour, and if you have any questions, comments, or emotional outbursts, let me know in the comments section. Please like, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.